Hello ladies and gentlemen and a very warm welcome to today's webinar brought to you by Shared Services Link and sponsored by Invocus. Today we will be looking at AP Automation's new P2P and that is Portals to Paperless. My name is Sarah Fain and I am the Head of Research at Shared Services Link and I'm delighted to be joined today by Richard Waugh who is the VP of Corporate Development at Invocus. You, of course, have a very important role to play in today's webinar, and that is to make sure that you get your questions answered. Please use the chat and question functionality on the right-hand side of your screen to submit questions to us, and the sooner you ask your questions, the more likely we'll be able to answer them in the last 10 minutes of the webinar. Just touching briefly on the agenda, what we'll be covering today, uh, I'm gonna open up with a little bit of context about why we're here. Then I'll hand you over to Richard, who will discuss a, a few things. We'll give a little bit of insight about Invocus, and we'll also cover some definitions, uh, such as what, where does AP fit in the P2P process, what exactly do we mean when we say e-invoicing, and deep diving into the paperless portal world. Then beyond e-invoicing, we'll do some following of the paperless process trail, and how you can start preparing for paperless. Again, we will have about 10 minutes for Q&A, so please do submit your questions to us throughout the process. So touching on the context for today, uh, nearly every AP or procured to pay department that we deal with is striving to reduce paper and paper-based invoices in the office. Uh, however, it's still very much the case today uh, that even very large and mature organizations uh, feel like they're often drowning in paper invoices. There are a number of reasons behind the, this paper. Uh, sometimes it's down to uh, poor process compliance. You may have tried to reduce paper and it may not be successful. Uh, sometimes there's poor math rates, which means e-invoicing just uh, isn't quite possible. And this also leads to poor visibility uh, and sometimes an inefficient and ineffective process. However, we have seen many successful organizations uh, introduce technology to, to remedy this, uh, specifically supplier self-service technology to take paper out of the equation. Um, we've seen results which are hugely positive and are drastically improving efficiency across the invoice cycle and are driving first-time match rates which are um, significantly improving the AP process. So with that, I would like to now hand you over to Richard Waugh who will provide a little bit more insight into the subject. Thanks so much, Sarah. Pleasure to join you today and, and everyone in our audience as well. And before I jump in here, maybe just a word about the, the title here. We're talking about AP Automation's new P2P. So we've renamed P2P, in this case, Portals to Paperless. Of course, the traditional definition of P2P is, is purchase to pay or procure to pay. And I think one of the things we want to recognize today is that, number one, AP is becoming a much bigger player in that traditional purchase to pay or procure to pay that integrates the first P, the purchasing part, with the second P, the payments. And, and then the, the reason for kind of renaming the acronym Portals to Paperless really reflects AP's unique position to really drive that migration to a, a portal-based and paperless process because AP usually owns the supplier onboarding process and has the most frequent collaboration and interaction with the suppliers. So, so it's really in a unique position to be the driving force behind the adoption of portals that are going to lead us to paperless. So that, that's the reason for the title. And before I get into the core of the content for today, I'll give you a little bit of context about Invocus specifically. So Invocus is a cloud-based software solution that focus on, focuses on e-invoicing, utilizing portal technology, but also encompasses a full AP automation, so not just the e-invoice. And really the goal here is driving end-to-end -end AP efficiency. Uh, now Invocus is a division of Zycus, and Invocus is dedicated specifically to e-invoicing and AP automation, but the the, the parent, uh, Zycus, has an end-to-end -end source to pay suite of procurement tools recognized by Gartner as a leader in their magic quadrant. So the next slide just give you a little bit more in terms of the 
the Invoca solution, there are two primary components. So in green here, the supplier network is that supplier facing portal, which is going to enable your suppliers at all levels, you know, your, your large suppliers, midsize, and even some of the smallest mom and pop shops, if you will, to engage and collaborate with you electronically. So giving them the ability to create invoices in a variety of formats, really at whatever level of technical sophistication they happen to be comfortable with, and then be able to really do more themselves, if you will. The self-service aspect of the portal is not limited to their ability to generate an e-invoice to you. It also includes then the ability for them to track on their own the invoice receipt approval and payment status really eliminating uh, those calls into the AP function that can be such a distraction. The bottom half in blue then is the, the invoice express is the the buying organization the AP facing capabilities that allow you not only to acquire that digital invoice from the supplier but automate the invoice matching and processing uh, routines throughout the, the process flow. So initial matching, automated workflow approval to uh, get the invoices signed off to resolve any exceptions, and then full reporting visibility across the process as well. So those are the components. The next one just kind of talks to um, the Invocus advantage, really the positioning uh, here on, on this next slide that, that says, number one, what do we want to accomplish? Well, we talked about in the open and the title for the session going paperless so no paper but also with this self-service aspect no calls into AP so it's going to make you more efficient and maybe one more no to add to the list here no fees so no fees to suppliers regardless of size and so paperless is the first piece the next piece is touchless touchless processing that's going to drive not only efficiencies but the potential to maximize discounts for for early payment for example and final finally here that it's really boundaryless as well um, so the the capability with with mobile technology to to take e-invoicing on the go uh, and that's both for the the AP function and invoice approvers as well as the suppliers themselves using mobile apps to, to really have unfettered access to this capability to drive full adoption. So that's just the background of how Invocus approaches uh, this, this particular area. So I want to go ahead and dive into uh, the discussion for today and start with some definitions. So first a process definition. If we look at the the context of where does AP fit within the context of procure to pay and so here we have the process responsibilities delineated in in yellow first for the purchasing function and then in green for accounts payable so upstream of the the invoice processing if you will the, the purchasing folks are focused on orders, you know, starting with requisitions, turning those into approved purchase orders, uh, uh, really mapping those orders to the preferred suppliers uh, who then fulfill. And uh, so the, the next step in the process being uh, acknowledging receipt of what was delivered. And along the way, the purchasing folks, your counterparts on that side are also really focused on things like catalog and content management, making sure that those preferred contracted suppliers with the, the approved items and pricing are visible to end users when they're placing requisitions and POs. And that, you know, essentially the what's on the PO agrees with what's in the contract. So they're really focused on compliance uh, on the front end of the process. And that's where AP takes over here in green as I mentioned uh, kind of the unique position of AP in most organizations AP owns that supplier master file after all the trigger to to entering a supplier in the in that master file is often the requirement to get an invoice paid so AP has a unique role at the start of that process in onboarding suppliers 
uh, receiving invoices, processing those invoices, going through a verification and approval process, and oftentimes then dealing with any invoice exceptions or mismatches, the discrepancy resolution, uh, culminating then with the, the approval of the invoice and the payment, but then a sort of a, a full life cycle responsibility for dealing with those inquiries that come from both internal stakeholders as well as suppliers, uh, both of which usually want to know what's the status of the invoice, when will the supplier be paid, and then also including the ongoing archiving, storage, uh, th those compliance aspects with, with keeping uh, you know, the audit trail around the invoices and the interface and integration to the financial statements. So reconciliations, uh, accruals, of, of uh, you know, items or, or services delivered and not yet paid to, to make sure that the financial statements accurately reflect the period costs. And then the last step in this process, sometimes a shared responsibility between purchasing and accounts payable would be uh, the management of any card programs, a procurement card, for, for instance, to, as one vehicle for payment of the invoices. So when we look at the broader context of procure to pay overall, AP's role is certainly more than just the second P in the process and and really this opportunity to be the driver towards uh, invoking and, and embracing and, and really taking advantage of the opportunity with this movement of portals to paperless. So that that's a one definitional aspect. The next one I thought we'd talk about what is the definition of an e-invoice in fact? What constitutes an electronic invoice? And on the, the upper left hand side you'll see kind of the textbook definition that we use here is that it's in fact fully electronic. It, from the seller's billing system to the buyer's AP system it doesn't require any manual intervention and data entry. So with that said, what what is not an invoice, an in, e-invoice, in e if you will, and that's probably easier to specify. Obviously, paper is not an electronic invoice, but the common misconception in many cases is that uh, many invoices are in fact received as attached files to emails, and because it's an electronic distribution of the invoice, sometimes that may be construed as an e-invoice. The bad news, that doesn't qualify in our definition here principally because those attached files then need to be opened and key punched into the system or scanned using an imaging technology. It requires that additional manual step in the process that introduces delays, a, a latency in the process, but also introduces the potential for errors, that, that the information on those invoices is miskeyed or or that in the scanning process, which is far from foolproof, there are errors introduced as well. So the bad news for, for folks who, who may be getting a lot of emails, uh, you know, invoices via email attachment, that doesn't qualify in our definition of what is truly an e-invoice. You see a, an example reflected here. So I thought just at this uh, outset here of our discussion today, having established this definition of what is and what is not an e-invoice, that we'd have a poll question, Sarah, to kind of get a sense of uh, what is the baseline today? What percentage of invoices are organizations currently receiving today that fit the definition of an e-invoice? That's great, Richard. Thank you very much. Uh, so coming up on your screen now is our first poll question of the day, and we are looking at that exact issue. Uh, what percentage of your invoices are truly electronic? And again, as Richard pointed out, uh, we do mean uh, arriving as a, a data file, for example, uh, via EDI or, or XML, not as an emailed PDF. Uh, so please tick the option that best matches your current situation. When you say it's uh, less than 10%, between 11 and 40 percent, between 40 and 60 percent, or is it more than 60 percent? If you've not been on a shared services link webinar before, uh, you'll, you may not know that we do share the results live, so it's an important benchmarking opportunity for you to see how you compare with your peers on the webinar. I'm pleased to report we have about 64 percent of you voting, so I will be closing the poll 
in three, two, one, and the results will be coming up on your screen. Uh, interesting to see that actually the majority of you, 61%, uh, have less than 10% of your invoices uh, electronic. Uh, just 7% are in the 11 to 40%, 18% are in the 40 to 60%, and uh, that's a good proportion of you, still 14% have more than 60%. What do you make of those results, Richard? Yeah, not too surprising, actually, sir. I'll share some benchmark data a little bit later in the presentation that says, number one, the good news is that there are there are organizations out there, and we see it reflected in our poll here, that are getting the majority of their invoices electronically. They have greater than 60%. And in fact, the best-in-class benchmark is 70%, but they are in the minority. Uh, so it verifies that it, this is achievable because organizations are accomplishing this, but for the most part, uh, you know, most AP groups out there are still in, in the early stages of adoption here, which, uh, you know, just tells us there's lots of opportunity uh, for, for, for most organizations to capitalize on in this area. So not surprising, but again, I think encouraging in that it's being done, it's being done successfully, and it can be done, and we're going to talk more about how to do that uh, going forward. So. Here we want to start with, uh, we, everyone talks about getting rid of paper and paperless, and it's, it's in the title for our topic today. And certainly there's a psychological kind of a, almost a cleansing benefit to eliminating paper, which is also, I think, intuitively more efficient. Uh, but, you know, for CFOs and controllers, that gut level or psychological feel is not enough. They want quantifiable, tangible business benefits. And here I think it's helpful to look at the fact that across a, a range of kind of a, what we'll call process maturity, uh, there's significant incremental savings to be had by converting to a fully electronic invoicing capability. Um, so obviously if it's purely paper, that's almost on, on, in terms of US dollars, the benchmark here is about $5 per invoice. But many organizations may have taken sort of that incremental step towards automation that I mentioned, either a scan and image technology or OCR, which is optical character recognition. And those are good first steps. But in reality, they require further manual processing review of the the, the images as they're scanned to verify the accuracy and so on, such that even those organizations that may have made that incremental improvement still stand to gain somewhere between a, a dollar and a quarter and, and almost $2.30 per invoice. So to, regardless of where you are across this continuum, there's a savings to be had of somewhere between $1 and $5 per transaction compared to either paper-based or, or scanning technology by adopting a truly electronic invoice. So it's good to know that the benefits go well beyond just sort of what we intuitively know to be the case, which is that getting rid of paper is a good thing, and that they can be expressed in a quantifiable, tangible format. So that's the the problem with paper. Now let's define what is it, what do we mean by a paperless portal? And so this next slide kind of shows you how does a, how does a paperless portal work? Number one, it's a cloud-based collaborative platform. So there's no requirement for installed software either on the, the AP organization, the, the buying organization side, or the supplier side. So that's going to make it very efficient for buyers and sellers to collaborate effectively and be up and running very quickly because there really aren't those barriers to adoption. And the efficiency comes into play first on the supplier side that the portal has multiple methods by which they can engage with their buying customer and can generate a digital invoice. You know, I talked a lot about what is not any invoice, but didn't talk too much yet about what are the methods by which I can create 
an electronic invoice. And, and really, this the good news here is that the technology is very flexible to engage suppliers at whatever level they're comfortable with. So your top tier suppliers that are already very e-commerce savvy and have investments in that type of technical infrastructure will be very comfortable collaborating with you on, on a direct machine-to-machine -machine integration using a standard protocol like XML or EDI. Not to get too technical, but, but those, those would be the top tier suppliers that are just very anxious probably to, to leverage their capabilities in e-commerce to, to really engage with you electronically. But the flexibility then is the ability for the portal to really bring into the fold a much broader base of including your midsize and smaller suppliers. So through the portal interface, they can use electronic forms. They can use a mobile app. They can use the cloud to convert paper through a scan and capture or an, or an optical character recognition process that I'll show you a little bit more about in just a moment. Or even something as simple as responding to an email can enable them to collaborate with you electronically and, and meet our definition of an e-invoice. I'll show you how that works. The portal allows them, in fact, in this spirit of integration of the, the purchase to pay process to receive your PO and automatically flip the contents of the PO down to the line item, unit price, description, extended amount, everything else, directly into an invoice. So clearly when you're when you're transferring data directly from the buying organization's PO into an invoice, you're removing the potential for errors to be introduced as part of the, the data entry process because you're just seamlessly moving data over. And then on the supplier side as well, you're enabling the suppliers to do much more of the maintenance of their own record in your supplier master file through a self-service registration process that includes provisioning any associated documentation that you may require, such as certificates of insurance, as an example. And then also empowering suppliers to monitor their own invoice approval and payment status on a self-service basis and not having to call the AAP group. And then at, you know, at the bottom of this interaction, on the buying organization side and the AP function, once you acquire that digital invoice, then the, the portal technology enables an automated three-way match or two-way match at, at the line item level, automated workflow approval routing to speed the overall invoice approval process and therefore the ability to identify and capture a much higher percentage of early payment discounts. So that's kind of the, the construct uh, in theory how this portal technology works. Sarah, next I thought we'd uh, go just do a quick demo, really from the supplier's vantage point, to show how the supplier would interface with you through this portal technology. So again, this is all operating in the cloud no software required on the supplier side, just browser access to the internet. And here they, the supplier would come in through secure browser access, enter their username and password, and click login to get access to the portal. So once at the portal, that supplier would be presented with a dashboard view that really highlights for them all the various types of interactions or collaborations they may have going on with you as their customer. So that may include the POs that you've sent them, uh, any contracts that you've got in place, uh, catalogs in the case of the, the purchase to pay process, as well as of course invoices that the supplier has generated that they want to track. So next I might uh, click on the menu here and I'd be presented with various options that I can drill into and today we want to look at view invoices you know my invoices to get a, a read on the status so again here the supplier doesn't need to call you as they click on view invoices to to get current real-time status on the not only the the payment side but number one starting with have you, has the invoice been received? Is it in the approval cycle or has it been approved? 
if it's been scheduled for payment, what's the remittance date? And if it's been paid, the actual remittance advice, including the check number. So most AP groups spend a disproportionate amount of their time, uh, often 25% of their, their apply time, just responding to inquiries either from suppliers or internal stakeholders, those calls that they have to respond to that disrupt their flow and activity. So imagine here the supplier having this capability, self-service, to be able to track their status, which, by the way, is a great incentive for suppliers to adopt this technology and come on board with you because this gives them much greater visibility to manage their own working capital needs much more effectively. So next, I've given you a sense of how the supplier would interface with the portal. And of course, as I mentioned earlier, the large suppliers, your tier one suppliers that have e-commerce capability would be able to integrate using the standard protocols such as XML or EDI directly from their AR and their accounts receivable and billing system into your AP system. That's the low-hanging fruit. That's the easy stuff, if you will. But I want to give you some examples of ways that the, the innovations in the technology have enabled suppliers at lower levels, many more of your small or mid-sized businesses that aren't e-commerce capable yet, to engage with you electronically in, a, in an easy-to-use, intuitive way. So one example here of portal usability is, is what we'll call cloud OCR. So this is hosted in the cloud, and it uses this optical character recognition technology um, to, to really simplify the process for the supplier. So it can be something as simple as a supplier using their mobile device, their smartphone, for example, they snap an image of the paper invoice, have it automatically uploaded into the cloud and transposed or, or transferred the data through the, through the OCR process. It reads the line information in the PO on the left-hand side and transmits that data and pre-populates the electronic invoice on the right-hand side. So it really simplifies the process for the suppliers, but not insignificantly, it makes sure that the, the supplier still has responsibility for reviewing the contents of the invoice, what's been transferred over in the OCR, to make sure that they verify the accuracy before they submit that invoice to you. So it really demystifies this process for the supplier. So even the smallest vendors that may have fairly low volume of invoices can convert the paper invoice to an electronic that enables efficiency on your side as well as theirs. So the next example here would be actually using the mobile app. So again, th these would be for smaller suppliers that may have relatively low volumes and limited IT infrastructure, they can use the, the mobile app on their handheld uh, smartphone device or tablet to be able to collaborate with you electronically, receive POs, flip them into invoices, track invoice approval status uh, without being tethered to the desktop all, all through the mobile interface. The next example that I'll share with you is probably the most basic or simple capability for which it's hard to imagine that that even the smallest supplier wouldn't be able to to uh, adopt and that's email so surely all suppliers are comfortable receiving and responding to emails and in this case the technology preformats an email message to your supplier by taking the contents of your purchase order and populating an invoice. So the only requirement on the supplier side is to lay eyes on this pre-formatted email and then confirm that this is an accurate invoice that they want to send back to the AP organization. So instead of you getting back, again, a paper or an email attachment, it's a fully electronic invoice that can go directly into your process in a touchless and paperless fashion. So just some examples of ways that these portals can engage suppliers at all levels of technical sophistication. 
Next, I want to talk about what happens once you get the invoice. So I've talked a lot and focused a lot about invoice acquisition and creating a digital invoice, but that in fact is just the first step of the process and, and full automation extends throughout the process and I won't take you through this this diagram in detail, but as we go forward we want to follow this paperless process trail and really identify some key points throughout the process where AP efficiency can be realized well beyond just the initial acquisition of an electronic invoice. So one of the things in the next slide that that e-invoicing makes possible is what we'll call a first pass match. So you may hear, hear this referred to in a variety of ways. Sometimes it's called straight through processing or touchless processing, lights out, by whatever name. Uh, the, the concept of a first pass match is really key to driving efficiencies throughout the AP process. And here we see a very stark contrast uh, based on this benchmark data from an Ardent Partners ePayables report that, that really delineates the difference between what best in class AP groups are achieving and everyone else, you know, all other sort of average performance levels. So best in class organizations are in fact able to have an automated match or a first pass match on the majority of their invoices, better than 50%. By contrast, the average performance for all others uh, indicates that the vast majority, better than 80%, don't pass that first pass match. Uh, that touchless or straight through processing, therefore the vast majority, better than 80%, require manual process intervention on, on behalf of the AP staff. So that creates a dramatic disparity in terms of productivity between what's being accomplished by best-in-class organizations, which have, by and large, adopted AP automation technologies and everyone else, and, and clearly freeing up that percentage of time uh, to not have to deal with manual processing and, and, and intervention is a huge boost to productivity uh, by addressing right from the outset uh, a high percentage of invoices that that go through on a touchless or straight through process with a first pass match rate. Now on the next slide I'll, I'll highlight the fact that even those best-in-class organizations are still having to deal with exceptions. Uh, no, no automation system will completely eliminate exception management. Of course, the goal here is to dramatically reduce uh, the number of incidences in which you have an invoice mismatch or, or an exception that needs to be resolved. At the bottom here, the, the, the Ardent Partners data highlights what are the top causes of invoice exceptions and, and most of the time it has something to do with a PO. First and foremost, it, there's a mismatch between the information on the PO and the information on the invoice. There's a quantity, there's a price variance, there's there's a something down to a line item level which is key here in the, the system automation that the intelligence is built in to the system to not only match the extended amount of, of an invoice to the total amount of PO, but down to a line item level to make sure that everything is in compliance. So better than two-thirds of the time, uh, AP groups say that the reason for an exception is a mismatch between the PO and the invoice. Uh, less frequent, but, but also significant, is the fact that either there's no PO at all or it's not the correct PO, or, or sometimes it's simply a bottleneck in the approval process. You're waiting for sign-off by a budget holder or other stakeholder, and it's just hanging up the overall process flow. So clearly we want to address the, the reasons for invoice exceptions at the outset, and, and e-invoicing and AP automation overall deal with those data accuracy issues that introduce the potential for mismatches and by reducing uh, 
the number of exceptions, we're obviously going to increase performance and productivity. And here again, there's a pretty significant variance between what best in class organizations are experiencing and, and everyone else. So best in class have about half the number of exceptions overall. So, so whereas they experience approximately one in 10 invoices that would be an exception or a mismatch, one in five invoices are, are the average performance for everyone else. So again, a, another key indicator here of process efficiency and compliance would be the ability to reduce the volume of, of exceptions throughout the process. Next, I want to take a look at uh, the invoice approval process and, and, and tools such as automated approval workflow routing to accelerate the overall invoice approval cycle time. So certainly not every invoice is going to go through on a straight through touchless process. There are going to be some exceptions and the key indicator then of the most efficient process is how quickly can you resolve those exceptions and, and complete the invoice approval cycle. So once again, a significant disparity between what best in class performance uh, constitutes and what most organizations typically see in their operations. So in fact, it's taking more than four times as long for the average AP group to complete the invoice approval cycle as opposed to a best-in-class company, almost 17 days on average compared to less than four days for those best-in-class performers. And this has key ramifications and implications. One, of course, the longer it takes, the more time people are spending, the less efficiency in the process, but also uh, it severely limits or in fact would preclude in most cases the ability for the average performer to take advantage of cost savings such as early payment discounts. So for instance, whereas standard payment terms may be something like 2% 10, meaning the buying organization can take a 2% cash discount off the invoice total if payment is remitted within 10 days, whereas net payment terms may be 30 days or 45 days. Obviously, if you're at 17 days approval cycle time, you're outside of the lead time, the tolerance to be able to avail that early payment discount. So best in class organizations are much better positioned to fully capitalize on the cost savings potential of maximizing early payment discounts. And you know, depicted below here is what is what does the automated approval workflow capability look like and what what can that introduce by way of productivity enhancement to the organization? Number one, it it starts with a graphical view of the, the approval cycle. So the the accounts payable specialist or manager that's initiating this process can see what what are the what is the approval chain that this invoice has to follow and that's pre-configured based on that organization's specific business rules and things like dollar thresholds for approvals or, or category specific or business unit specific approval rules and not only is it automated in the respect that it's it's routing um, that through an email notification to the approver and enabling them to approve either through the application or through their smartphone device as well, but also the, the, the other challenge that comes into play here that sometimes stretches approval cycles from the goal of, you know, four days or less more to the average of 17 days or so is simply that someone's sitting on it they're, they're, they have more important things to do and they you know they haven't approved the invoice well here the the tool can there therefore introduce automated system reminders and alerts and even escalations to remove that uh, that approver and, and substitute a different approver if required to make sure that you don't have suspended invoice approval process simply because of inaction on the part of the reviewer or approver. So that just gives you an idea of another key point, the overall cycle time to payment. 
Now next, this doesn't stop there. Of course, the value of AP automation extends beyond the, the stage at which the invoice is approved and really includes then the ability to maximize working capital management. So faster approval cycles, better visibility, really enable an organization to, to achieve a variety of goals with regard to working capital. That may mean uh, early payment discounts to maximize savings, or it could mean extending days payable outstanding to hold on to cash longer. So the first example here, early payment discounts, we've got some data here from Hackett Group benchmarks that contrast, again, top performer or best in class performance as opposed to average performance overall. So top performers are, are able to take advantage of early payment discounts uh, much more frequently, so they're, they're taking advantage of about 85% of those that are available. And then in terms of expressing that in terms of actual savings, that amounts to a top performing organization saving about a tenth of a percent of total spend through early payment discounts. So that's obviously a fraction. Fractions are, by definition, small uh, numbers and small percentages. But just to, to kind of extrapolate that, uh, again, that, that is as a percentage of total spend volume. So take an organization, a large enterprise, a billion dollars in spend. The difference between being an average performer, the peer group, which is capturing only two one hundredths of a percent of spend through early payment discounts, going to a top performer where it's a tenth of a percent equates to almost a million and a half dollars in savings that AP can bake into a business case and show directly, you know, matriculating to the bottom line profit enhancement of the enterprise. So pretty, from a fairly small percentage, pretty dramatic improvement in cost savings because it comes right off of the, the amount of the invoice that gets paid to the suppliers, who of course are often very willing to extend and accept those discounts for early payment because of their own working capital needs, the importance to them of getting paid in five or 10 days instead of 45 or 60 or 90 days, for example. And I mentioned earlier that uh, not every organization is interested in early payment discounts. Many are still trying to actually extend days payable outstanding instead holding on to cash longer. Now of course just because you can complete the invoice approval cycle faster doesn't mean you have to pay any faster. It just gives you better control and visibility over, over managing that working capital. Although I would say the clear trend this day in, in spite of the fact that old habits die hard and DPO is a pretty well ingrained performance metric is to move towards capitalizing early payment discounts. After all, what's the value of holding on to cash longer, especially in, a, in an economic environment, uh, true uh, in Europe in particular, where you have the, the phenomenon such as negative interest rates, where you actually have to pay the bank to hold on to your money for you. So I think more and more the trend will be going towards capitalizing early pay discounts, but the significance here is that the AP automation technology can enable you to further either cash management strategy, whether it's pay early and get the discount, or hold on to cash longer and, and perhaps avoid the need to, to go into the capital markets to borrow. So with that, Sarah, we've talked about so many benefits, you know, and, and I, get, I think it sort of begs the question that we want to introduce on our poll question here. Given that there's so many benefits, what is it that's holding organizations back? And there could be a variety of factors. So we want to talk about those. That's great, Richard. Thanks so much. And thanks for all that really great benchmarking information. Um, again, um, as Richard mentioned, we want to know what are the, the biggest challenges that you face when it comes to um, you know, implementing automation for your AP organization. 
Um, so which of the following um, are, are, are your biggest hurdle? Um, is it that you don't have executive buy-in? Is it a lack of budget? Uh, is it that you have a fear of no return on investment? Uh, do you happen to think that your current systems are adequate? Or do you perhaps suffer from insufficient IT support to make the change? Um, again, please take the option that is best reflects your, your biggest challenge. Um, we currently just have about 45% of you voting, so we'd like to get a few more of you in um, and get that a little bit closer to at least 60%. And we'll be closing the poll in three, two, one. Just shy of 60% there of you voting. So the results will be coming up on your screen now. Um, and interesting to see that it is really pretty spread across the board um, and happens to be in ascending order here. 13% um, of you say that you, you don't have the exact buy-in that you need. 17% of you say that you suffer from a lack of budget. 17% again fear of, of no return on investment. And 26% each um, believe that either your current systems are adequate or that you don't really have a sufficient IT support. Richard, what do you make of these? Uh, this is encouraging to me, actually, Sarah, because I think the tougher nut to crack here um, does tend to be executive buy-in, budget allocation, those kinds of things. So that's cited much less frequently. And the easier problems to solve, if you will, are things like insufficient IT support, especially because with cloud-based solutions, with uh, you know uh, lots of support for not only enabling internal users but also supplier onboarding enablement that severely minimizes and mitigates those requirements for IT support so so that's encouraging to me I'm a little surprised that there's there's such a you know an equal percentage 26 percent that believe current systems are adequate and would be you know I, th I think sometimes that uh, that spells uh, it's kind of a fear of change too because uh, you know most of the the older legacy technologies are clearly inadequate, and uh, you know a lot of times it's it's more about change management, which is which is uh, uh, something to be dealt with because the the technology itself is really the innovation has has driven ease of use uh, accessible at all levels, uh, both for internal users and suppliers. So I think the technology is not the challenge. Sometimes it's that inertia or fear of change that's a bigger challenge as well. So I want to jump into how we overcome some of these challenges here uh, and really talk about how we prepare for paperless. Before I jump into that discussion though, maybe just to reiterate the importance of mobility here in, in sort of anticipating and preparing for this migration or transition to the paperless uh, portals. Um, and I think with regard to uh, you know our, our audience, a uh, European audience today in particular, where, where mobile technology is in fact much more penetrated than than you know where, where I'm from in the U.S. or in the North American market, so it, it's automatically uh, a key enabler that's in place with the the deep penetration of mobile technology that's going to enable a much faster uplift or adoption of this technology and, and again in particular I think in the European market. The other thing it does is is kind of makes this millennial proof if you will. So um, the millennials uh, as contrasted to, to my own generation uh, really have a different view of what usability is all about having grown up on on tools like like Facebook as an example and they they really don't want that traditional enterprise application. So another key aspect of mobility is making this uh, readily adoptable by, uh, by you know, the younger uh, tech-savvy mobile workforce and, and also removes the, the barriers to entry, levels the playing field for even your smallest suppliers so it's not just for the largest ones. So again, just a reiteration about the importance of mobility. And now I want to talk about how do we prepare for this transition, preparing for paperless. So here's a, a checklist starting with establishing your baseline, gathering benchmark data, really understanding 
your current process capabilities and then setting targets for improvement based on best in class. Uh, quantifying that in a business case and I'll go through some best practice examples of really uh, uh, most of these steps as well. How do you segment and triage the supply base to get the the fastest benefit and return on investment? Um, how do you go through then selecting the right portal technology, making sure that it integrates with your existing ERP and other systems? Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the importance of onboarding suppliers because it's so critical that they participate in order to get the benefits. And then sort of how do you and how are early adopters of this technology setting key performance indicators and metrics to monitor their progress and plan and execute the rollout in a phased-based approach as they go towards their ultimate goal. So that's the high-level checklist. I want to start then um, talking about, in the next slide, the importance of gathering baseline data. So I won't take you through the, the excruciating details, some of these numbers here, but these are some of the, the key metrics to start to gather around your own operations to really understand, am I sort of at the peer group level, which would be average performance. Maybe I'm behind, maybe I'm slightly ahead, whatever it happens to be. But this is about the art of the possible. The, the possible is what world class are achieving with full AP automation and then setting the targets. And of course, the delta between your baseline and what the, the world class goal is, is the incremental improvement opportunity. So without going to going through each in detail, I think one of the ones that's that's very revealing. Third one in here, percentage of invoices received electronically. We asked the, the poll question at the outset today, and most were I would say this was fairly consistent in that most were receiving uh, you know a small percentage of their invoice volume electronically today, at least one that that meets our definition of a true e-invoice. So you see here that the average performance is only 19%, but contrast that with world-class performance, which is 70% or more of invoices electronically. And again, I think that should be encouraging that this is not a pie-in-the-sky vision. This is actually something that's be it being achieved. And hopefully these will be uh, helpful benchmarks. Uh, these are provided by Hackett Group. Um, that really help you identify across some of those key metrics what your baseline performance is today and then helps in setting targets for the improvement. So next, how do I take that benchmark data and roll it into a business case? So the business case includes a variety of benefits, both tangible and intangible, but I'll just focus on a couple of key tangible quantifiable benefits and kind of a simple example here that looks at both process efficiency and cost savings through early payment discounts. So let's take an organization that has about a half a million, uh, sorry, half a billion dollars in, in annual spend and about 200,000 invoices that they process annually. And let's just assume that they're at the average performance as their current baseline. Well, forecasting improvement that gets them to world class generates in excess of a million dollars in savings for them. That's, that's taken between process efficiency and reducing the cost per invoice, which generates about a half a million, and better than a half a million as well in getting to uh, world class performance on early payment discounts because of accelerating the overall invoice approval cycle and process efficiency and and other metrics here that can be measured also look at cycle time reduction or productivity in invoices per FTE as, as well. So just a, a simple example of the business case. Next on our checklist is really segmenting the supply base to prioritize those suppliers here in the next slide that that generate the biggest return on investment the fastest. So here there's a three-tier model. At the top tier, this is the ver veritable low-hanging fruit, if you will, the largest suppliers to introduce a direct machine-to-machine -machine integration using XML or EDI. 
The good news here is that the 80-20 rule generally applies. So this may be 20% of suppliers they constitute 80% of the invoice volume. But full adoption will require including the the tier two, sort of a portal base for mid-sized suppliers moving to the cloud, giving them a variety of ways to engage with you through the portal, extending down to tier three, an app-based for uh, an app-based mode of engagement for some of the smaller suppliers using mobile or email technology. So next, uh, I just want to kind of leave you with some some key. Uh, factors involved as well. How are the early adopters of e-invoicing going about it? And not surprisingly, from a Hackett Group poll, uh, the vast majority, 86%, say we're primarily prioritizing those suppliers that have the highest volume of invoices. That, after all, is what delivers the most benefit the fastest. So next, let's take a look at kind of a progress report on how they're setting their goals and what they're achieving. So most of the, the organizations that participate in this, in this poll are still in fairly early days of adoption, let's say 12 to 18 months in, uh, but are achieving significant results against those goals. So where they set a goal of about half of suppliers, they've got about a third. Almost two-thirds of invoices was their goal. They've got about half of those to date. So those are kind of adoption metrics. The next slide kind of gives you a sense of the tangible results that they're achieving. So once again, a progress or status report. They haven't planted the flag and declared ultimate victory yet, but demonstrable benefits received to date. So about a third reduction in overall process invoice processing costs, about a quarter less time spent on supplier inquiries that they have to respond to, uh, re reduction in the number of paper-based invoices by 42 percent, and about a one-third improvement in on-time payments, and better than that, 37 percent improvement in the first pass match rate. So very demonstrable, quantifiable benefits and significant progress towards the ultimate goal being realized by the early adopters of the invoicing. So the last piece I want to cover with you is a very critical thing not to be overlooked here is the importance of supplier onboarding because supplier adoption, the ability to get them up and running, will be tantamount to actually achieving any of those results. And, the, and there are costs associated with the supplier onboarding process. So here from the, the Hackett study, is a benchmark that on average it costs just under a thousand dollars per supplier to get them on boarded and also it, it takes about two days of, of applied effort and about 16 days elapsed time to get suppliers up and running so the significance here and the takeaway is you know look for a solution and a solution provider that's going to provide that supplier enablement and onboarding support. Otherwise, be prepared to budget and staff for those resources to, to perform this function, which for most buying organizations would not be a core component. So the best practice is to, to engage a, the e-invoicing AP automation provider to really help streamline that supplier onboarding and enablement process. And the last one I want to leave you with today really looks at what's holding the suppliers back. We talked about what's holding AP groups and buying organizations back. And really here the misconception is that, uh, you know, that sometimes the thought is that the, the technology itself is an inhibitor or a barrier, but that's way down the list on barriers that, that are actually really uh, constraining suppliers from adoption. In fact, the biggest barrier is a model that would introduce any supplier fees. I mentioned earlier uh, the position of the Invocus uh, solution, for example, is no fees to suppliers. So you want to take that barrier off the table right at the outset. Um, that's cited here 65 percent of the time that that a fee to the supplier would preclude them or, or dissuade them from participation. And the next thing to keep an eye on is, is making sure that you've got that onboarding 
process support to smooth the way for them. But the good news is they don't find the technology in and of itself particularly daunting, especially when there's this variety of methods that we've covered today to engage the suppliers. So Sarah, I know we've covered an awful lot of ground, haven't left much time for questions, but uh, hopefully uh, addressed a number of the concerns that may be out there and really shown the potential for process improvement and profitability enhancement. That's great. Thank you very much, Richard, for a really in-depth presentation. Um, so I appreciate we are at the hour, but I will take a few minutes to go through questions. And if we aren't able to get to your question, I'll suggest I send these directly to Richard and he can perhaps get back to you individually if we aren't able to address your question. Uh, the first one I want to put to you is um, about uh, the Zykus's supplier network also allow for supply chain finance and or dynamic discounting with selected vendors. Absolutely, yeah. So, um, you know, one of the implications of process efficiency and reducing the cycle time is, is capturing either already contracted uh, early payment discounts or engaging with the, the supply base around kind of a sliding scale of dynamic discounting opportunities, so much more flexibility uh, there as, as well as being in, able to you know engage third party, in many cases non-bank financing to, uh, to really present uh, the suppliers with a variety of, of financing options, so all of which are on the table and in play here, but only enabled if you can get the efficiency on the front end. That's great. Thank you. Um, another question here about the supplier portal and communication between the, the, the buyer and, and supplier. Um, in case there's a need for the vendor to contact the customer, what kind of communication facilities are there? And is there any ticketing capability built in? Yeah, so, you know, this enables, I talked a lot about sort of standard business documents and transactions, POs and invoices going back and forth. But the portal, an area that I didn't touch on is a great question, is there's also all kinds of unstructured communications going on. And the portal technology certainly, certainly enables that. You know, it can, can have those, that back and forth collaboration, create an audit trail of, of what's being discussed back and forth, and it enables that collaboration on either a one-to-one -one basis between the, you know, the AP group and that individual supplier. It may be on occasion a need to communicate one-to-many, the buying organization to N number or all suppliers. So absolutely the portal enables collaboration not just around structured transactions but also structured kinds of collaboration and communication with the suppliers. That's great, thank you. Um, another question, wanting to, a little bit more information about the reporting capabilities. Um, someone's asking if they can build their, their own set of reports, um, aside from the ones that may, you may have just shown on the screen or that are built into the application as standard. Yeah, great question again. Um, you know, it's helpful that, that an application like this includes a number of out-of-the-box reports, you know, that are kind of based on best practice that you know, most AP groups uh, want to review, but it's also critical that there's that ad hoc reporting capability too. So yes, absolutely, on the fly, users can, can create their own reports, you know, using a, a variety of different uh, filters and so on and dimensions so that it can be personalized you know, down to that individual user, not just not just the, the business unit or organization, but to that individual user and they can create their own dashboards and those kinds of things. So lots of power and flexibility from a reporting standpoint as well. That's great, thanks. Um, I think I will use this as the final question. Again, if we didn't get to your question, I will forward these to Richard. Um, for the, the mobile OCR solution you mentioned, um, how is the template set up for the application to, to map the invoice data uh, to the right elements? Yeah, so the, you know that, that's where OCR would be one version of, of a technology that we would call AI-based artificial intelligence. So w without getting too techy on anyone here, 
um, you know you have a standard sort of template format and and there's a mapping created between the the, the, the you know the the original document that then gets OCR'd in the cloud to create the e invoice um, and what's really compelling about this is that uh, it's a machine learning technology so the artificial intelligence in fact gets progressively smarter and more and more accurate about mapping the contents the line items in a in an invoice into the electronic version of that document because uh, it increases over time with the confidence and the accuracy by which that information is transmitted and transferred. Uh, I also mentioned and stressed in our discussion too that it's still important even when you have an AI tool such as the optical character recognition that there's still accountability for verifying data accuracy and that I think properly rests in this case in the hands of the supplier so they the technology does the the trans transmission for them in the cloud but the supplier still needs to review and verify that 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 information has been transferred accurately and and when they hit submit they're taking responsibility that the invoice is in fact correct that's great. Thank you very much. And thank you again, Richard, for um, a presentation chock full of really valuable information. Um, just to close out, uh, not only will you receive the slides from the presentation, um, Invocus have also uh, shared an Ardent Partners a research report with you, which we'll send a link when we send the slides. Um, I'd also just like to draw your attention to some other webinars we have coming up at Shared Services link that may be appropriate for you or your colleagues. Uh, you can find all of these online as you can with our upcoming events. Thank you very much for your time and attention today and we look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.